Almost four years ago, we did the one thing everyone warned us not to do and bought the first Land Rover we viewed. We didn't have any experience with old 4x4s or building camper vans, so we decided to keep it simple and figure it out along the way. Fast forward to today, and since buying this old green Defender, we've changed head gaskets in a field, replaced two turbos, rebuilt swivels, renewed timing belts, replaced plenty of wheel bearings, and drained endless litres of oil. We built the original interior with a couple of hand saws and a tape measure, and left for our first trip, a six week drive to northern Norway in winter. We've also been lucky enough to get to visit and explore some of the most beautiful parts of Europe, taking off dream destinations like the Alps, the Pyrenees, and Corsica, as well as several laps around the UK. We've learned loads along the way, and we're now planning to rebuild the interior and make a couple of changes to kick off the next adventures. But before we start pulling everything out, we'd figured we'd do a long overdue walk around of the landy and the interior that we've called home whilst living on the road. So we've had our Land Rover for just over three years, so we thought we're overdue to give you guys a tour of the inside of the car, what we take on our adventures with us, and kind of like the kit that we have with us. <laughs> so a little bit about the car. It's a 1997 Land Rover Defender 110. It started off as a three-door utility, and then the previous owner completely uh, restored it, added a new galvanized chassis, new doors, and turned it into a five-door county station wagon. It's Keswick green, and there's just like a couple of basic accessories on the front as well. I've got the snorkel, steering guard, uh, and a little snow cow. And that's pretty much it. We like to keep it standard just because we love the way it looks. It's got the 300 TDI engine, which is pretty good because we didn't have much mechanical experience before we bought the car. And it's a really nice, easy, simple engine to work on. Whenever we go on a trip, we do a fair amount of like on tarmac driving. So we've got BF Goodrich, all-terrain tires, 26575 by 16 on 16 by seven modular rims. We don't do that much crazy four by four and off-roading, but we've got rock sliders and a two inch lift just to give us a little bit more confident when we do go off-road. Around the back, we've got the trash roof, really good. We use it as like a bin bag. We store firewood in it. We put dog food in it. Pretty much anything that's kind of gross that we don't want to store inside the car, we leave it in the trash roof. We've also got a set of max tracks on the back. We've never really needed them, but we've been able to help get a couple of other people out of some sticky situations, so it's good to have them handy. One of our favorite things is the gull wings on each side of the back. They're really handy just to like get stuff in and out, or we can cook as well underneath the tent in the dry. So this is the inside. We built it before Norway, about three years ago now. So it's definitely seen a lot of wear and tear. We're hopefully planning to rebuild it soon. We built the camper in a rush as we only had three weeks until our Eurotunnel was leaving for a six week adventure to northern Norway in Arctic winter. We were on a tight budget for this build as we wanted to save all our money for the trip itself so we budgeted around 500 for the entire build. That doesn't include a lot of our current accessories like the roof rack, tent, fridge and was only for the main interior structure so pretty much just the wood, insulation and mattresses. Then we slowly added all of our current accessories over the next few years, taking the time to really think about what we actually needed. So we built it in like an L-shaped layout, which we personally really like because with the place to have your legs, you can sit inside, you can cook on the kitchen counter if it's like pissing it down, which it does happen a lot in England and Norway and everywhere really. Under here is all storage. You can access it from this way or you can also get in through here. We intended to build covers on this side, but we never got around to it. And actually it's quite nice that you can just reach in and access it, especially if someone is sat here, i.e. Henry or Wally. In the back, same things, just more storage. We normally have the chair and the table in there. And there is a panel to access it from the top, but because it's mostly stuff that we use outside, like tools and stuff, then we don't need to. So this is our water, it's a lifesaver, so it has a filter built in. This thing is incredible. We bought it a long time ago, still going strong. You are a bit squeaky. You pump it, and then water from down here. Ah! Oh, fuck. This is a molly panel thingy. 
for the back door. You can put like all these things on there. It's really useful for storage and stuff. I think we have jet boil in here for all our coffee. Mirror. Rattles a bit, but you know, does the job. Why are you putting that <laughs> Kitchen counter. <laughs> Banging. <laughs> um, herbs. Counter. So inside we've got a couple of little things on the walls just to try and make it easier to organize all of the stuff we bring with us. So we've got a little net here, which is really handy for like books or like going for like a, a midge net and like an eye mask. Um, up here, there's like a little washing line as well. So if you're just coming from like a soggy walk, we can hang our coats up on the little elastic rope. Um, and then up here, like another big net, we kind of just like dump all sorts of stuff here. So there's like dog jackets, beanies, there's some wine glasses, um, and then these sort of like insulated window panels. We got these before the trip to Norway and they were super helpful to, for us to like keep the heat inside the car. In the summer, we don't really use them so much and it's nice to kind of wake up with the sunrise when we're sleeping in the car. Safety bits, carbon monoxide detector and then a fire extinguisher for when we're cooking. If it's too windy or rainy, we normally sleep inside and we have two panels under here that fit just like in this section. And then we also have two of these cushions that come in here and complete the bed. Yeah. It's, I think it's a bit smaller than a double, <laughs> but it's quite comfortable. This is actually a proper mattress that we bought from Ikea and cut. It was like a foam one, no springs. So it's actually more comfortable than the rooftop tent, but it's smaller than the rooftop tent, so. Fridge. <laughs> this is the fridge. We have a Dometic CFX 55 litres and there's also an ice maker. It's the greatest thing to ever happen. And we put it like this, so on summer trips, we can just like reach through the window, grab everything we need. And then on winter trips, we'll probably turn it around so that the latch opens inside and we can use it inside. Under here, there's more storage. So the diesel heater, dual battery system and inverter, which helps us run the fridge. <laughs> Do I look weird? Yeah, you look very weird. This is the roof tent. This from front runner. It's pretty sick. Just got the standard 110 flat dog rack, and then we've also got jerry can holder, or like a jerry can and water holder, which is really good when we're up in the desert. It was nice to know that we could have extra fuel and water with us. Up here, we've got a front runner awning. It's the shorter one, so then when it's open, we have a nice like cover with the tent on the same side. And then we've just got like big storage boxes for camping gear, car, like spare parts and oils, and then it's pretty much everything we need. <laughs>